Welcome um, to the September, the Tuesday, September 17, 2019 Board of Commissioners um, Transportation Committee meeting. Um, this is a regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, we've got a pretty full house and full agenda, so we're going to go around the room as our custom. Please let everybody know that this actual meeting is being filmed for archive and open record purposes. Um, again, my name is Kelly Robinson, elected as District 2 Commissioner, appointed as Vice Chairman. I serve as Chairman of this Transportation Committee. Uh, County Administrator Mark Teal. Jessica Theriot, Assistant to Mark Teal. Jamal Shepard, Connect Douglas Transit Coordinator. Gary Watson, Connect Douglas Transit Services Director. Gail Valentin, Transportation Director. Terry Gable, Program Manager. David Goose, Boss Communication Director. Tim Rader, North Valley. Jessica Stevens with Moreland Ontivelli. Michael Hunter, the Collaborative Firm. Deborah Johnson Blake, the Collaborative Firm. Ramona Jackson Jones, the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and the Vice Chairman of the Transportation Committee. Very good. Welcome all. Pretty full agenda. Miguel um, Valentin is the Director of Transportation. He serves as the facilitator of this meeting. Miguel, are we ready? Yes, sir. Okay, first item. First item uh, would be uh, approval of minutes of the August 20th, 2019 meeting okay. and the September 11th, 2019 special call meeting. We have two sets of meetings. Um, I to make sure we want to make a motion for both of them simultaneously. Okay. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve both meetings, the regular schedule middle meeting and the special call meeting? So, we got a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Anybody want to discuss? Edit? If none, can I get all who are in favor of adopting the meeting minutes as presented? Raise your right hand say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, thank you. Yes. First item on the agenda is updates from our Transit Services Division. Okay. I'll turn it over to uh, uh, Transit Services Director. And I, in turn, am going to uh, yield the floor to Michael Hightower, the collaborative firm. Thank you. And we have some uh, paper. We, we, we believe in uh, uh, sometimes our tree challenge is a little bit much, but I want to first pass out uh, some of the documents to the uh, to the committee. That's three documents we're going to pass out. Yeah. One is the uh, is our regular monthly report. Yep. Two is the uh, is the document from mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, two is the document mm -hmm. from uh, 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 Rika. Uh, as you guys know, Gary and I we did a, a fantastic job at the ATL, and uh, you will be proud of uh, Mr. Tillis. I was he represented Douglas yeah. County well. And uh, we, pay, we, we provide you guys with a copy of that document, as well as uh, uh, the document that, uh, which will be the meat of the day, will, will be the uh, Dr. Davis's document as it relates to the uh, uh, 90 day review. Very good. So it's a lot of paper, but it's, but it's good paper that's worth it. <coughs> I need a couple of reviews. Okay. I wanted to start, and I want to be very brief because uh, Gary, has, Gary, has told me, I mean, Gary has told me to be quiet and sit down in five minutes. So Gary, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, Madam Chair and okay, Commissioner Robinson, I wanted to say I'm just happy that uh, you have a great Douglas County citizen in Dr. D.J. Johnson. She had just been a wonderful addition to, to, uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the team. And I wish we could make a Jared man and at her house into Fulton County. Can we do that? Not we cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she has just been a wonderful addition, and I think you will see in the review that she's done, it's really brought a lot of value. Uh, again, the first document dated this is our monthly report, uh, all the ongoing activities, and we've had several meetings with Gary over the past couple of weeks. And Gary, thank you again for your involvement. Uh, it includes the, everything from the social media, media output to ongoing advertisement. Uh, I don't want to bore you, but the, the answer but this is a very aggressive uh, ongoing money report. And the second, of course, uh, we gave you a copy of the uh, presentation that Gary did for the most part uh, at the uh, ATO. And let me just say, Madam Chair was there along with Vice Chair Robinson, and uh, Gary represented Douglas kind of well, uh, Miguel and Mr. Teal, uh, and uh, uh, Chris Thomason. We had uh, a meeting last week following that on, on another map. And he said, Michael, one of the best things I've seen in the region is Douglas County. That was unsolicited, Miguel, from Chris Thompson. Uh, we had a meeting this past uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, or another man. He brought it up just on his own. 
And that says a lot about y'all's leadership. So saying that, uh, that's the copy of that document. And Gary, he, thank you for you job well done. Dr. DJ is in your hands. All right, well, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, uh, staff. Thank you so much for the opportunity to briefly present um, a little information today on the qualitative study that we conducted. First, I want to say, as a person that doesn't ride public transportation, I enjoyed my four days on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, and I also want to say that the staff at Transitions, the bus drivers were very nice, as well as the patrons. So I could see that the patrons and the bus drivers were building relationships because it was people who were riding the bus two to three times a week. So I just want to say that to start off. But what you have in front of you is a, a detailed report that is inclusive of quantitative and qualitative data. Quantitative data from the standpoint that Mr. Watson will discuss a little bit later, such as you know operations, revenue, uh, ridership, things of that nature. From the qualitative perspective, we had an opportunity to interview 12 patrons. Um, and the first bus that I got on, just to give you a quick overview, was Route 20, which was the largest one that I had that time. I got most of my participants from that route. I was so happy because I think I had uh, seven or eight people. So I was getting excited because I thought every route would give me at least seven or eight people to talk to and get their perceptions and their experiences on riding Connect Douglas. Unfortunately, 20 was the largest route and I enjoyed that very much. So what I did to tell you how I did the whole collection of the data process, I spent four days, August 26th through 29th, a Monday through a Thursday, and each day I decided to ride each route. So I started with Route 20, then I went to Route 10, 30, then 40. And as I mentioned previously, Route 20 had the most patrons on it, Route 40 had the least. So I had one person, and maybe because it was the times of day that I could ride the bus, and what I did was ride in the morning, midday, and afternoon, for the most part, um, trying to catch the different bus stops that were kind of close to my house and then I could get on. Data collection. The data collection process started with me asking questions, uh, up to 10 category questions that had sub-questions under them, which included up to 19 questions that patrons could answer. In your report, in the appendix, there are, and there is also a, a table of contents that can tell you what page is on. In the appendix, you will see the questions that I ask each patron, and that's on page 74. Um, and so what happened was, as I was asking these questions, and you know, as with qualitative data, anything can transpire. So my job is to take the data, drill down, and try to condense it where it seems that it's understandable to the people that's going to be reading the results. So I had an opportunity to do that again for four days. Um, took a few hours each day. Then I had to transcribe the data. So what I did was take um, an app on my phone and actually use it as a recording device to help me as I was taking notes to make sure that I wouldn't miss any important information that you could glean from as you continue to improve the program. Once that was done, all of the 12 interviewees, uh, the information was transcribed, uploaded to a software called InVivo, and I also used it along with Excel to de develop the graphs. In addition to that, I had an opportunity to interview five of the Connect Douglas staff, and that was actually me asking questions and having a recorder in front of them, and then going back and transcribing that data as well, uh, basically word for word for the most part. That data is not in your report. I did not put all of that information in it because I didn't want to overwhelm you with that. So for the most part, I took out sections and excerpts and placed them in the report as far as the interviews from Connect Douglas and the interviews from Transitions Commute Solutions team. And from that team, I interviewed two leaders, two of the leaders only for that. So they gave me a total of 19 respondents and, and gathering data from that, um, I don't know when the last time you did a report, it really 
can make a lot of a lot of data, a lot of information that you don't have in front of you. But I wanted to give you a recap of that. So if you if you look at the report, and I'm just going to give you a quick brief overview. Look on page 17. The reason for using Connect Douglas, you will see here some of the reasons that the patrons use Connect Douglas. And one of the reasons is really to go to work, to commute, to, we had two people who use the paratransit service, so they use that to go to a doctor's appointment or to run errands. Some people use it because they have no personal vehicle. And most people found out about Connect Douglas by seeing the buses in our neighborhoods, by seeing information on CCT, those who had to do the transfers. In addition, uh, we even had somebody who was uh, doing some well care. And in rehab, they actually told her how she could get transportation to get to where she needed to go, which one of those was work and one of those was school. So she was in the process of improving her life. So when you think about it from that perspective, this service is life-changing for many. Uh, just based on my conversations, even sidebar conversations on the bus, um, people were really glad to have this service in the county. Just know that what you've done is phenomenal, and I look forward to seeing the growth and the expansion to the other areas of our county, which people indicated that they wanted to see. In addition, if you would go to the next page, which is 18, system availability, you will see how do they get to the bus stop. 40% of people walk to the bus stop, meaning that they do not have a vehicle. Of course, that 20%, those two that I told you, those are the paratransit. Some people take a taxi, which means they're spending additional funds. And some people come all the way from Cobb County to go to Georgia Highlands College which is, you know, fantastic to me. Another thing on page 19 I'd like to share with you is how many times per week that people ride the bus. And more often, there's 23% ride it seven or more times in the week. And that's 23% of the 12 patrons now. So the information I have don't represent everybody who rides the bus, unfortunately. So it's a small sample that I'm giving you the data from. We have 15% that rides one to two times a week, 15% that rides three to four times a week, and 23% uh, that rides five to six times a week. And when you look at that data, even though it's a small sample, I can only imagine what would happen as this project continues to grow and how many patrons you will have on the bus each time. In addition, if you go down to let's see, page, page 29, where we talk a little bit about the interviews that are paraphrased from the Transit Services Connect Douglas. There in this section and throughout several pages, you will see the respondents' um, experiences that they had since the launch of Connect Douglas. You'll also uh, see their discussions on the three to five best practices as they continue to work with this program and how to make it better. In addition, you'll look at some overall comments on how um, the program can become even more viable in the lives of the Douglas County citizen. You'll also see at the, at the back of the report in blue, uh, just some concerns that some of our citizens had about uh, the bus, but that with every new project, there's always challenges as you continue uh, to make things better. And last, um, I think in this brief report that we did achieve the goal of determining if Douglas County is meeting the needs of the citizens in terms of public transportation. And based on my assessment, I would say yes it is. Um, even with that small group, of respondents, you are meeting the needs of those people right here in the city center of Douglas County. And that concludes my brief overview, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. I want to add, I was going to add that the 
uh, pages 48 on, and Gary, there's some rather some data that's in here that in case you ever want to speak to that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. No, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And this is something you're going to have to read. I'll read on the plane tomorrow on my way. I know, I you. know, and I apologize um, for no, that. No, I was no, trying no. to be um, no, no, as that, concise as possible. No, no it's not. No, I'm okay. saying it, it's appropriate. I would expect nothing less than this. I'm just saying I won't be able to. I'm listening. So, yes, sir. All right. So I acknowledge the fact you said um, you, you, you get you know, to avoid the fallacy of low numbers. You acknowledge it's a small sample. You're able to sort of go talk to a few people. So, yes, sir. All right. So with that said, so, and again, this is out the gate. This is our first official, let's go talk to the people. First 90 day or is it six days or nine days, Gary? 90, 90, 90 days. All right. 90 days. First quarter. So it's, it's yes, still sir. early. This becomes our baseline, in my opinion. So from here, and I'm talking, I'm sure we're, we, we, we like to talk methodology and statistics and trackability. So is there, to really get progress, you have to track things over time, right? You need more than one data point to see if trending. Absolutely. How are we trending one way versus the other? What's the volatility plus and minus and, and so forth? So, uh, so over the next three years, which is a pilot program, do we think, is it being recommended that we do this maybe once a quarter? I mean, how do we really measure um, how well we're doing? Because again, having a one time and then going away, and we're assuming, well, it sounds good. No, we need to be able to prove it. Absolutely. And it needs to be, and, and, and so I think y'all know where I'm trying to go is that, and so this is more of a broad question, we won't belabor the moment, because again, we need to read what we're hearing. But Gary, do we have any thoughts on uh, how will we utilize next year to keep measuring this? I mean, what, what is the intent? How about the stuff? Well, I believe that early in our process that we need to have a report like this every quarter. Uh, that, that would be beneficial to us as a staff to know where we're going and also we provide important information to the Board of Commissioners. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, and this is important, we go, we go way back, uh, and Gary, you, you're sort of the common thread, which is we knew that this is something that we could not do internally. So we've got a third party partner at the table that I think is important. How do we measure them as well, right? So um, there's a formal feedback that speaks to us as overall, but how do we um, also measure our third party provider? How is that being approached? Well, with this, with me, it, it's real simple. I ask them to do something and they do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get it. Uh, it, all right, so this list, again, for transportation, is it, I, I get ridership and measuring how well our riders are doing in the context of things. Um, there was some contractual obligation expectation association with our third-party provider, on-time delivery, things that we are contracting. How are we measuring that as well? You need both parts, right? You need the user experience. You need the service provider experience. How are we doing both of those? And kind of measuring. We're talking about the contract itself. How do we measure well, against that? Right now, we're, we're giving them somewhat of a, a grace period as we continue to work out with some of the kinks. Um, and that will probably continue throughout the remainder of this year. And then early in 2020, we'll, we'll really start tracking things like on-time mm -hmm. performance. The, uh, one of the things we always talked about, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that, we can I'll yield to anybody else. My last, or my third question is, um, we have, um, reports were important. We're gonna go back, you know, just like schedules are important to me. Uh, reports were important. We knew it as part of one of the conditions of awarding this contract um, was reports, how well we're doing. And I know we got the writer, you know, the writer's you know, report. But, it was additional reports, I won't call them canned reports, but for the sake of the conversation, there should have been some type of, are you getting that information? I mean, how, how are they, I mean, talk to me. We're, we're getting information from them. It isn't necessarily the exact information that we're asking for, and it's not in the, the, the format that we want. So those are some of the issues that we're still working through uh, with the third party. Provider, okay. right. we can we'll take we'll make a note and maybe we can double back. Um, you know, we needed information. Part of the selling point of, of selecting them was the number of reports that they could provide, whatever that was, relatively speaking. So I want to go back to what they submitted to say that they would be able to provide us, and just check and see how well they're doing against that. So it's more of just a checkpoint. 
Madam Chair, County Administrator, anything else y'all want to talk about? We've got a full agenda, but I don't want to not take time to miss yes, sir. If, if, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, let me point out a, a couple of uh, operational type uh, items. Uh, back in the, the appendix, there's, there's several important charts and the one thing for private ship and fair collection. Which one do you want to go to? Yeah. Uh, okay. Appendix A, the ridership data is way it's way in the back of the Oh, page, uh, page 78, 72, 48, 76, 72, 48, or 76, 48. His, his, his packet will look, excuse me, for oh. the direction, slightly different. Oh, I apologize. Yes. All right, so 72, looks like, okay, got it. Go ahead. I can just point it out that, that uh, from the time we launched in June uh, through September the 11th, we've had 4,852 boardings, which averages out to 69 boardings per day. The, uh, the most active pickup point that we have uh, comes as no surprise, it's the, the transportation center. Second is the Douglas Boulevard park and ride lot, followed by the Fowler Senior Housing Center, and then fourth is the epicenter Cobb Transfer location. So those are our most active points to this, this period. One of the things that, to, thank you for sharing that. What, one of the things that we realized is um, obviously the Route 30, the business uh, community, um, the business route, we we'll call the commercial corridor. And um, recognizing there's less commercial, less residential people who are engaging into it, but they connect to it, um, obviously. Um, does the hours of operation have any impact on this? I'm going to go back to when we did the public engagement at the Hilton Hotel. and. We had um, obviously some of the, the major employers out there, and we, we did your presentation and said we start at a certain hour, um, what, 7 o'clock? 6, six. six o'clock. Mm -hmm. I, I think the comment was made that uh, that misses that shift, right? In other words, the, what they were looking for. Um, and I know it may not be time for us to address route adjustments, because I think we said we're doing it the first of the year. But how do we, what's the plan to drive ridership in that area? I mean, is it more awareness with the employers? Is it an hour, um, um, hours of operation adjustment? I mean, what are you thinking now? It would be all of the, the above. Okay. In, in, in fact, Jamal and I had a conversation about this earlier today as to when we might want to implement some of these changes. And uh, we still feel like it's too early to pull the trigger on any major changes. Um, and so it, I would think that it's going to be after the first of the year before we start with making significant changes to any of the routes. Okay. Yeah, could I ask something? I think uh, may, may I, uh, one of the things that we talked with Gary about was about looking at uh, more specifically with some of the employers, having them to have additional information on site regarding some of their policies as well as transportation. And I think that could also help them drive uh, communicate with new employees, uh, Mr. 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 Robinson, but also have them to understand how they can be a better patron. So I think they have additional education, work with them, and also uh, tying into as Mr. as your economic development people, like Mr. Pompey talked. I mean, this is, I think is a more systemic place that this can grow. Uh, and and, I, and you, you actually preempted what I was thinking, which, which is good, which is, but uh, as you know, um, sick. 40% of our digest, 38% comes from commercial, right? They, they, though they, have, they don't have a voting right, uh, they do contribute to the digest. And we know that that area provides a, a, a very important contribution to our overall digest, right? One of the things that they've historically said is that they, they look to have sustainable transportation in that area, and so they, they, they applaud it and, and support it, our pursuit of this, this um, public transportation option. That being said, uh, I, I think to your point, I question how much they are aware. Um, you may get an HR director at a meeting and so forth, but how hard have we hit the head of those organizations, those major employers, to say, y'all need to be a little bit more actively, mm -hmm. to your point, engaged in this. So, and I'm trying to figure out, I'm not sure this is more, it's more of an operational, um, and, and maybe we leverage our, our partners, but we need to do, I think we gotta go deeper in their organizations to get them engaged. Do you, I mean, I, I'm reiterating your point, yes. which is my thought, because I, I, I think only they can drive that. In other words, let your employers know, employees know, that there's this option out here, and, and by the way, they, they ask for it. So, you know, you need to avail yourselves of it. 
sending out um, what's happening and uh, one time press releases, that's not a good way to penetrate. It's not going to go deep enough. Uh, a lot of people who are decision makers may not necessarily live here to pick up this or be on those things. So I'm looking for some cre other creative okay. ways to go there. I know you guys talked about doing lunch and learns, maybe on their site versus making them come somewhere. I'm open now, Chair. I'm, I'm looking for creative thinking outside. Breezy, breezy yeah, at the development of yes, yeah. 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 Breezy can get you the HR directors of all. Oh, yeah. They, awesome. I, I, I will confess, they've been a tough nut to crack to this point. And I, one example I'll give you is, is we've been trying to work with, with Amazon. But the individual who was over the facility in Lithia Springs is based out of Washington State. So, he, he's promised, promised us that he is going to pass along the information to the on-site people there on Thornton Road, but so far that hasn't happened. How does that work? You, know, you got to bait it. You have all the access points like, okay, now, right? It, it's, you, you have, you can be creative. Work with Chris Pumphrey, work with Breezy. Yeah. I, think, I think you yeah, guys can get there awesome. and yeah. get attention. Okay. But can we make it as an action item? I don't want to belabor this, sure. but just one yes, sir. work session. Make it as an action item out of this committee that Gary, you and the consultant will go and figure out a strategy to approach them to, with the objective gotcha. of increasing ridership mm -hmm. and then report back um, you know, by our next reporting period at the end of the year. Sure. Can we do it that way? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to say Yeah, I'll just, um, just briefly back to Dr. D DJ's presentation. I agree with the quarterly uh, updates, and, and, but if we could just hone in on some of those outliers and just uh, conduct a group cause analysis on those and just see what we can do. I know trending is nice, but we'll see what we can do to just improve some of those items quickly. And you may say, hey, it's changing quickly. If we just focus on those with the group cause analysis. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, I, I had an opportunity to speak to um, a citizen who utilizes the bus system quite often, and she just ranted and raved and thought it was the best thing since tea and honey uh, on Sunday when I met her at church. So, it, it, and she also, and then had an opportunity to speak to one of the drivers, and they just said business is picking up. They mm -hmm. said it's just really picking up. So I thought that was really encouraging. So sure. thank you all for working so hard. Yeah. If, if you'll allow me to, let me make just a couple of other quick comments and then we'll move on to something else on the agenda. Uh, operating expenses and revenue, uh, to this point, we're actually under budget by almost $9,000 a month. So we're tra tracking very well on that. And the, the other question I have for the committee is, uh, with this report, it's, it's my intent to uh, give the, the committee time to review the report, report, make any comments, suggestions, changes to it, and then I would like to present it to the full board of commissioners at their second meeting in October. I'm fine with that, but I'd like to get a summary of this. Get, would you give to the board of commissioners? Give them this report. Can we get like highlights? Sure. Yes. Topic points. Mm -hmm. I mean, this. This is great, but if you go in before them, we want it so that they can hone in, like say, operating to ridership. Just what are the highlights of, of all these works? Can we do that? Gotcha. Yes, sir. Absolutely. May I make a comment? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I was going to say that this report is a high level report. It does not include like every single detail that a normal qualitative mm -hmm. report would. Include. I wanted to say that. So some information that you may be looking for may not be in there. But if there's something you need, just let me know no, after it, you read it. I yeah, just no, wanted no. to say that. Yeah, no, it's more a presentation. Um, it's more presentation to the full board of commissioners, knowing their nature. <laughs> it's summarizing this as talking points, mm -hmm. not just saying that it's not here, it's not detailed or anything lacking. It's it's it, it, it's. I yeah. We get it. I'm sorry. We got you. All right. Anything else? No, sir. That's it. Miguel, you oh, sorry. Can I make sure you have Do you have another copy of that? Yes, sir. We need one for the record. For the yes. yes, sir. Which, which one? All three of them? Uh, no, we just got, the 90 days. We have two. We didn't get the 90 days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, one quick as uh, related. So, 
Uh, our branding, I mean, not our branding, our marketing efforts have, do we believe that, Gary, what do we got planned for the rest of the year? Um, this is just in general. It's, well, it's, are you still working through it? It's okay. Oh, I'm yeah. It's, an and some of this, some the, of the answer to your question is in this report here. Yeah. But, but we're heavy into uh, all the local media. Yep. Uh, Chef Hill News and News Hometown Advantage. Yes. We're getting ready to be initiated an intense campaign on cable TV okay. for the remainder of the year. Yep. Uh, still making uh, appearances out in public. Two things then, the status of a video. If you talked about the video and being able to educate people, um, there was something that came forth as a task, so one of those stats mm -hmm. of the video, that's my first question. It's on, it's on page three of this document. So we're, we're, not, yeah, we're, we we're, we're, we're working on that. We've had conversations with Rick Martin and his staff. Um, we're, we've already developed a script mm -hmm. and yep. some of the, the, the scenes that would be filmed for it. They, they asked us if, if possible if we could wait until after they finish September Saturdays. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, that's fine. It makes it, so no, no pressure. And Gary, also, must, but on page three, you have a schedule of that line. I think you're talking about. All right, great. And the next question, and again, I'm, I'm bringing up the highlights, is we talked about uh, two things. We got to, I got some feedback, again, about bus stops and um, identifying bus stops. And, and, and while it was more constructive, where we appreciate the bus stop signs, they're, you, now this is my surmise, they're cute, they're creative, we love the colors, but they blend in so much to the background that, you know, some type of people are used to just the plain old boring government utility signs. Bus stop, I'm just making that up. So one of the things that we know that it, it, it just blends in, it, it, the colors are so soft and they're pastel -y. And and again, I think there's some, it, it was something about the creative side, but I think the utility was missing. I, I think people are looking for where, I mean, they zoom by them because they're blending in the background. Make a note that we know there's nothing to change now, but uh, that was something that's just, okay, if you're blending them in, I can't see them. Which leads me to my last point to keep it moving, is shelters and seats, for the sake of the proper term. I know we had somebody come out and speak. Mark, I know you put a, a pause on that, which I thought was appropriate. But where do we stand on um, that as well, um, an approach to having seats and shelters? Well, we, we already have a federal credit administration grant in place that will allow us to put some shelters in, in benches at, at, at certain locations. Yep. And, and we're still in the process of identifying the stops that we want to, to utilize those at the beginning with. All right, so some of this data will help you sort of determine where you've got a high right. concentration of people. Yes. Um, and so we still may be, what, another reporting period out to see how oh, it grows. Right. Get to, especially when you get through this this colder month. Okay, that's all we need. Okay. Anything else, Miguel? Are you want to weigh in, or are you okay? No, I think we have a good plan. Um, a lot of the uh, timeline and, and goals are in, in the report, so we'll work our way through those. Okay. Uh, as it relates to the bus stops and, and building those out, if there is a possibility of keeping the signs that are there, uh, but putting a supplemental black that says bus stop and maybe that will get us by for the time I'm going to be the operation to handle it just we want to be able to respond to the public so I'm fine with that so again I'm kind of sure just to confirm um, a formal presentation was made to the full board of commissioners at our first meeting in October yes, second, second meeting oh, sorry. Yeah, second. second meeting October that's why I asked. second meeting in October and it's just, again another version of this um, with this full report, but there's two things. The writer's experience, which you guys are sharing, but also from, from a, a, an agency perspective, your plan is going forward. And I see that there's two different things. You guys do an assessment and figuring out this, but there's also operationally how you plan to handle things. Can you be prepared to do both? Yes, sir. Okay. Mark? Yes, sir. Can we take a little move on? Yeah, I'll just add one more question for um, Gary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gary, just that with the call center, will they be providing reports to you regarding complaints to just show that it's trending down? If you know people saying you're not even like this, the bus was late, will they provide a report for you maybe next month to just kind of show that those complaints are almost 
resolved themselves and gone away. Because I'm quite sure they have people on the switchboard taking calls. Yes, ma'am. And they could probably say those calls. Yes, ma'am. And all of those calls are included in this the blue portion of the Yeah, I saw that. And I was just wondering they're gonna show us how they open yeah. up at the event to measure those calls. All right, I think we've sufficiently addressed this. This was a very good first topic. If there's nothing else, um, um, Miguel, let's continue on. Yes. You guys, thank you. You're more than welcome to stay, but thank you. And we'll be there Saturday as well. 21st, we'll be there Saturday. Thank you, Fisher. Thank you. We look forward to your presence. <laughs> okay, also related to uh, transit services, yes. uh, Gary, you want to give us an update on the building addition? Sure. We, we finally do have a signed contract for construction. Uh, of the addition to the transportation center. Uh, we're having our pre-construction meeting this Thursday. Uh, hopefully we can iron out all the logistical details. Yep. Uh, uh, let the, give the contractor a couple of weeks to get mobilized and, and hopefully in less than a month we'll actually be moving dirt yep. down there. And we'll, we'll have a ceremonial groundbreaking or something like that. Do we get a hard hat? I have she hasn't got her first hat or shovel yet. So please. We'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I should. No, for first, real. Now. I'm serious. Yeah, I have not received a shovel. All the commissioners have one. Except yeah, myself. I, I got at least seven. Car. And you're just like, really? Come on, guys. Give me a shovel. We can do <laughs> that. All right. Anything else on that? All right. No, no. Real quick. So how long will it take in estimation? I Maybe you just take it out. Just, I was con the con they have eight months in the contract. We don't believe it will take them that long. Right. And it's 5,000 square feet. 6,000. Give it that time. Sounds good. Okay, all right, very good. Uh, any more yes. Okay, okay, very good. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is a report from Moreland and Altabelli on the pavement condition evaluation. Oh boy. Please. Yes. Are we in good shape for the shape of the union? There we go. Okay, that's working. Good afternoon. Hey, how are you? Yeah, the floor. Go ahead. Uh, so, I don't know if some of you know me, but my name is Tim Rader. I do work with Moreland Elf and I've been with them for about five years. And previously, was with GDOT. So, uh, but I also live in this county and have for since, I guess, 2003. So I, I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to uh, drive around and actually see the whole county. It's really a beautiful county. And, uh, you know, while there is four districts, they really are, are all pretty similar. Mm -hmm. So the county is a lot healthier than people, I think, believe. But I think they really need to get out and drive it and look around. Mm -hmm. and, uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, Miguel had asked us to use uh, Paver, which is the software that the reports and all the data yep. has been put into. It's a pretty uh, standard example of uh, what the rating form looks like. There's basically 20 different ways to rate the, and three different levels of uh, low, medium, and high as far as condition mm -hmm. of the different points you're looking for. Um, Paver, though, was originally d developed for the Department of Defense to go and figure out how to take care of and maintain their facilities. And the benefit of it, though, is once you have programs in mind for maintenance, once you get your data in, you can help build your maintenance plan around the program. And it'll forecast it for you. So uh, pretty good program. Now, I'm not going to show you all 20 of the, the defects, but the ones that generally make your rating numbers lower, one of the first ones is alligator cracking, and you can see for yourself the, uh, the difference between low, medium, and high. Mm -hmm. um, block cracking is another one that uh, is fairly typical. Uh, these are probably more related to load. Mm -hmm. Heavy loads, Heavy loads yes. will tend to block crack your roads a little more. Yep. Uh, potholes is the one, though, that really drives your number low. Um, some, some, we have a few, not many, of roads that actually came out with a zero. It's the potholes that did it. Program, just uh, if you have medium, a bunch of medium or several high-level potholes, it's going to 
bring the road down. So when you're, you get your report from Miguel and start to look at it, and you're wondering how could a road be that low? It's really the pothole that. So it means it's bad, though, right? Low means bad. Mm -hmm. Low means bad. All right, that's so. that's the that's the key. Oh, and you, you're on to it. Uh, one of the other benefits of this program is we were able to go and classify all your roads for you. And so you also have the ability to go and build a maintenance program around the different levels of the road. So uh, we did end up using your A is your major arterial. Normally that would be for interstate, but since you all don't have to maintain them, we went ahead and used A. Uh, B is your minor arterials. C is collector. Uh, one of the roads you've never had tracked before was your industrial roads. We went ahead and used it. And then your local roads, which in your maps I believe they refer to as local, would be the E residential. Yes. Um, if you look at the road report, there is a couple ends on just a few roads. Those were roads that the city or the county has the county has already taken possession of, but because the development collapsed, the road got closed off and blocked off, so it's not being used now. Okay. There's a, none of the other examples would be there's a road that you realigned the road. The original road is really not used anymore. It's, it's, you never took it up, but it's not really being used. And then we also used you for your subdivisions that are in transition. The developer has built them, but they haven't completed the process for being incorporated in the county. But Miguel wanted us to go ahead and capture them now while we're going through. So um, when you're looking at the ratings, this part was a little bit customizable, but for your, the purposes of Miguel has used this program before, he wanted us to make these adjustments in the numbers. So your 0 to 40 range is going to be your worst roads. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah, so basically from there. But uh, one of the things in the report, we did not rate stone roads. We just documented them. So that'll be one of the things you do want to remember when we get to those. What's the stone road? Gravel. Dirt. Dirt. Gravel. <laughs> okay, I got it. You, you do have several gravel roads. Yeah, guys. So here, I did want to show you an example of one of your better roads. Um, this one came out with no defects. It was done a couple years ago. This road was also resurfaced recently. And one of the things that can bring a number down a little bit, it did have a little bit of a shoulder drop off. Where the you know they had built the shoulders up, but before the grass came in, we had some heavy rains and it eroded a little bit. Another one of the other issues we have is all these rural roads. I love the post office, but they love to drive off the road to put the mail in, and so they cause these little ruts all the way along the road. Um, but those are issues. Your fair roads generally are going to be roads that the majority of the road is good, but it's got some patches that are starting to have issues. Mm -hmm. uh, your marginal roads, you're going to start to see your low level cracking. You're, you're going to have low level block cracking, low level alligator cracking. Mm -hmm. And your very poor road, unfortunately you've got the highest level of distresses. Generally lots of potholes. Your high cracking. So, And I did want to go ahead and like I said show you the stone road and we didn't, like I said, we did not rate them. We did document them to make sure you had them in your inventory. And I know you're familiar with the map, but I, for the color purposes, I did want to go ahead and throw that in there. And we'll start with District 1. Uh, this is, we have, this slide is basically showing you the miles you have of the type of road and the percentage of the roads in that area. Okay, so what is... <laughs> Lisa, what, like the report card, yeah, is like, what I need. Yeah, what you get? I guess what you if we're the shape for the yeah, shape, yeah. we're, we're going to hold, right? I, I should have moved District 2 to the last. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but this is important. This is, yeah, this is what we really wanted to be able to get to So as we advocate. So, no, keep going. This is, this is relevant. Yeah, no, it, and, and so here's District 2, one, one I know you dear to your heart. Mm -hmm. But you can see you've got, you've got some good roads, but you also have yeah. some bad. Right. But you don't have a lot of stone. So that's, you know, most of your roads are paved. That's, that's mm -hmm. positive. Uh, District 3, again, the road's pretty good. Still have some bad, though. Uh, District 4 has the most stone roads. Okay. More rural. 
More rural, yeah, like more by design, design like yeah. put down. What's it called? The spray. But then also, on the 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 percentage is 32. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty high. Yeah. Okay. And the issue is you, you've got a lot of. Um, okay. Go ahead and show the next slide. Now, before you go into add up all the math at the bottom, yeah. only the last column is, is the correct total miles, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. The rest of the miles, because the way your districts border, I didn't want to go and cut out some roads that you shared, yeah. so I gave you both credit for them. All right. So, Thank you for that, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's why there's a little bit of difference. And then I went ahead and spun it a little bit different for you. You can see here your major arterials really are in good shape. Yep. Uh, your minor arterials have a little bit more distress. Your collectors are starting to be a more of a problem. And your industrial, you can see we don't have a lot of industrial miles, but the uh, all that truck traffic tends to tear them up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, give us a good example of collector. Like, what, what's what's coming into collector? Yeah, a lot of your collector roads are, are roads that actually feed, have schools on them, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so your your major arterial would be like a, a Chapel Hill. Okay, major arterial. And I think like West Chapel Hill is a, a minor arterial. Okay. And then some of the feeder roads that come off that would be your collector. And then after that, you have your local. So the collectors, the, the collector feeds the local. It's your generally. We don't have much left to go here. We've got the, uh, you know, we, we, we're going to provide some software, the copy of the software licenses from Miguel. Mm -hmm. We're going to turn the database over for you. We have started to set up a, a plan based on working with Miguel on how he intends to, wants us to work <coughs> out his options. Yep. So he can, we can populate that, and then we're also going to conduct training for the staff to use it. Right. That's, all right. That's very good. So we, you know, part of our decision making is we, we do what we call long-term capital planning. Some of it is operational, but still it's, it's relevant as this is one big project, right? What would it take to resurface every road? I think we came up with like, what, $140 million? Uh, but okay, that's one big project, but how would we break that out? How would we do that over time? This will help to drive that decision. So based on the current need, on what our, and I, again, you might have skipped it, based on what we know today, Miguel, like the, the bottom, zero to 40 or whatever it is, how much is that? How many road miles? And I didn't see it. Was there a summary? Yeah, it's up there. Yeah, yeah go talk. back to the back slide. Day. Let's talk about that real yeah. quick. Just for the open record. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you've got... Basically, 198 so miles. Twenty. Yeah, you you have a total of 198 miles that are either poor or very poor. Okay. That's 27, almost 28 percent of the county road. Got it. Mm -hmm. Now, also in the good and excellent range, you have 250. So between that is about 35 percent. So. The rest in the middle is typically what we would be targeting with Elmi. Mm -hmm. The collectors and arterials would be the splosser. And one of the reasons why, I think, you find that, that the uh, collector roads and the arterial roads are showing up in better shape than, on average, than the rest is because they have gotten more attention Thank over the year, Thank over the years. So um, this will help you develop, uh, home in on a program. We can do it, this information, the beauty of this is that now that you have the data in, you can manipulate the data in, in many different ways depending on what you're trying to accomplish. You could, you could develop a plan of a pack, a contract based on a dollar figure yeah. and of course, we would have to split uh, close to equally amongst the districts. Sure. Uh, or, or some other uh, ratio that you all agree uh, to. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so there's many different uses for this program. Uh, the data is good, a good snapshot per year 
from zero, which is what this is. It has to be updated periodically. A good target for this is about no longer than three years to redo this. Every now, so what we do is, if we had, for example, a, a, a three million dollar project that we wanted to contract out, we could go into the program and give it that maximum expenditure, and then say <clears throat> we're going to need. Um, we have to essentially give it a decision tree how to go about selecting but it would target so many of the real bad roads right. a certain percentage a certain percentage of the good roads mm -hmm. and then some in the middle will be the so road so it'd be like 20 20 and 60 for the stuff in the middle so 20 for the worst 20 for the best meaning okay but it needs something like crack ceiling, for example, to keep them in good condition. And that is, that is the, uh, the idea behind a manage, a pavement management system, yeah. that you target the good roads to keep them in good condition before they get into the marginal. It's kind of like uh, a roof leak. If, if you detect a few drops through the ceiling, with some staining, you, if you go and seal that, then you stop the progression of uh, the deterioration, both of the roof and what's below. Same thing with the pavement. If you're able to seal it and keep it sealed, uh, then you buy yourself time to keep it in that condition for any deterioration. Uh, so, so this is our intent to use uh, this program for the Sprost and Elmig uh, contracts. Of course, we'll have to have a discussion about the, the mix, the uh, uh, total for each particular year. But we can we can say okay, in this year we're going to have a three million dollar contract. Next year is going to be one million because that's mm -hmm. all the funding. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're to your point, we want to keep, leave it equal since it's been historically equal among the commission districts. We want to have a function of redistricting. We'll, we can fix that later, but we will leave that alone right now. But to your point, um, I, I heard 198 um, road miles, right, center miles. I heard 28% is the worst part. What was the dollar amount? I'm just trying to frame something. We we have not. Um, Give me an estimate per center mile. How much does it cost to resurface? And I can do all math, right? To do 198 center miles, since that's the worst, that's 28%. You're probably, you're probably looking at about. Um, Maybe about thirty million, six hundred thousand per. So we get two hundred times what fifteen? One. That'd be one. So I'm saying this is two hundred cent miles. All right, so two hundred cent miles. Yep. How much per cent? I'd say about six hundred thousand per. So. And and again, this is just. Uh, just an overlap. I think it, it's going to vary according to the trees. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 12 million? 12 million, right? Is that what you're doing? Mm -hmm. No, I was figuring the Okay. <laughs> All right. <he> <laughs> All right. So, so no, it's okay. So, by the time I, I'm chair of the committee, I like for this to be formally presented to the full board of commissioners, as is an administrative concurrence. Bring it on board. I think this is as you go into your budget cycle, as you guys go into the budget cycle, as you bring this before the board, board of commissioners at our retreat. I think this is going to be some valuable information to go into that process. Miguel, you think you'll be ready? Yes. Give it, utilize this, you gotta present to the Board of Commissioners first, but then utilize this and what y'all bring forth as relates to the general maintenance issue. Sure. Um, I, I just have one question. I love the, the uh, report. I think it's very uh, yes. cut and dry and very concise. Yeah. However, where is the yeah. detail that discusses which streets are the ones that are bad and, and would this new software provide that and would will you utilize this software as a dashboard? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. I'm glad <laughs> it you. exists. It's a lot of people. Yeah, I don't need to see it. I'm just yeah. saying that'll be yeah. yes. And and how will we make this information uh, known to the public so they say, you know, my street one day will we be will. we have um, certainly we have the details on all of the uh, 
all of the streets. Uh, this particular uh, report is going to be. Uh, it, this is uh, um, alphabetical, so it's not necessarily the most user friendly, but it is a complete list and it gives you the information on each specific road. Now, once the board has seen this, uh, if, if we could do it with listing alphabetically, we yep. could list them by the district. I'm sure the commissioners uh, would like to have a list, yes. a subset of the overall list. Uh, and then we can post them online mm -hmm. and be available to the public. Now, of course, along with that, we probably want to give them a little uh, primer in what does the rating mean? Zero to 100, zero is no good, and 100 is excellent. Thank you. Madam Chair, yes, efficiently works, yes. Yes. I was just looking at my street. This Since the potholes kick a road down low very quickly, if we go out and pack mm -hmm. and we upgrade the system, Is and we go in and change mm -hmm. it, or would we change it? It, it, it? No, we wouldn't necessarily do it um, like that. We would report to maintenance within the system. Okay. So, so when what happens is we would have a, a, a projection, let's say that, that we have a, a $3 million project and it, it will give us a list of, depending on what each road is going to need to have done to it, you it, it, that too. it, it may have, uh, let's say, 50 roads. Well, once we get the printout from the system, we're going to go out and actually look at the roads and we're going to look at the history mm -hmm. of the maintenance because, as I was saying earlier, this is a snapshot on year zero. Right. The minute, uh, you know, from now on, the roads are all going to begin to deteriorate, some faster than others. Typically, the, the rate is about three points a year. Uh, so. We would, we would be able to look at it, say, three years from now, and what is today 100 would be a 91 rating. But uh, what would have been a 85 <coughs> may, three years from now, is going to be 79. We, if, if that is one of the candidate roads that the system um, selects, then we will go out and look at it and determine, is it really still a 79, is that a fair assessment? And either change um, what we do to that road or suggest a different road because that one is still in good enough shape that we don't need to. So we have a researching program next year. Would you then go in yes. when complete yes. and update the system? Absolutely. So that Absolutely. Man, you know those roads are... Yes, are we, would, we would do that. But, but for... Um, patches for, for potholes, unfortunately the system doesn't recognize a fix like that. It just, the system is, is very uh, um, particular about uh, potholes. It doesn't, it, you know, because even if you cut them out, and, and I think the historically the, the uh, individual who developed this system way back uh, has left a legacy of a patch is a patch is a patch. And that carries to this day, meaning that if a road deteriorates, it has some underlying reason why that happened. And you may patch it and, and have a level surface, but the underlying reason is still there. So it still degrades the PCI. Okay. But well, we're, we're going to bring this topic to a close just because we got the rest of the agenda to get through. But I think this is something that we've all anticipated. As you know, for the record, um, for the open record, the board commission has passed this 5 all This is a tool. This is some, some input and decision making that they were looking forward to. So, county administrator, when I'll, I'll assume you can get on the agenda. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Um, when you guys are ready, Madam Chair, to bring this forward, um, yeah. which, which is um, the same presentation, the same top, the same approach uh, as is, and, and, and that I'm sure they'll look forward to it. 
the thing about this is that, to your point about the baseline, um, this is the baseline. Our roads have not been rated in how long? Did you estimate, guys? Uh, officially 2005. It's almost 15 time. years. So, um, but then to your point, we're just going to get started. We're not necessarily committing to another road re-rating, but what, how often? Maybe five, maybe at least 10, every 10 years, Mark? I mean, I know I might it's, have heard five, every three, 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 three. Well, can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. If, if, if you go five, if you go, yeah, if you can get five Ooh. years out of it, the the projections were still fairly on the mark. Right. We were we're decent. Well, think about it. We haven't been done since fifteen, and then we see what the results were by thirty thirty some odd percent were decent. Uh, whatever the case, twenty eight percent were very very bad. Okay, that's a good benchmark, right? That okay, we went fifteen years, so. I don't necessarily know we have to rush in three years, but I think this is a good start. This is good stuff. Thank you, guys. If I could add one thing. Please, weigh in. On your rating form, you'll see that gravel roads are rated 100%. That's because we didn't actually rate the gravel roads, so it shows up in the report as 100. Okay, I got it. So don't be confused that gravel roads are great. Okay. Right, let me ask a question. I can manipulate that and take it out. Really yeah, let me ask a question. Is that, if I were to pull for a average PCI, would that skew it? Uh, the issue is I, I can go and call that out. In the, in the you point that out. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll need to flag them out because otherwise it's just yeah, I mean, I've got it. I've already got it called out and I'll give it to you. Okay. Work that out before yeah, you yeah. get to the Board of Commission so we've got to clean them up. Okay. Mark, you okay with that? Yes, sir. All right. I'll, I'll give these to you. Those are the reports generally. Right. We need to do it pretty quick. Yeah. You guys got to start working on the, on the LMIG with this for GMOP. All right. All right, Miguel, is there anything else on this topic? You got your marching orders? Yes, sir. You clean it up before it gets to your full board of commissioners. You won't vote on this. You just got to make sure. Okay. Very good. All right. Next topic, please. Okay, next topic is the, the uh, discussion on the call for projects. The Atlanta Regional Commission has uh, opened up a window okay. for um, applications for new projects or funding, uh, supplemental funding on existing projects. Right. And uh, the, uh, the there are different um, categories of projects. However, the one that requires the least um, documentation and or commitment, well, uh, maybe that's not the best term, are projects that are already, let, let me rephrase that, the ones that have the best chance of getting selected would be ones that are already in the system particularly roads that have federal funding uh, to them. Yes. And so to that end, we would, uh, uh, this handout essentially is a list of the roads, uh, the projects that we have in the system right now that are active that uh, we could go and ask for supplemental funding. The uh, the application period go, runs to October 11th. Uh, the applications for these projects, as I mentioned, probably be easier because the, a lot of the information is already on there. Yeah. It does require a resolution of commitment from the county. Mm -hmm. and so whatever funding we request, uh, there will be a resolution agreeing to put the local match that would go with it uh, for that amount. So uh, this list runs through the year 2025. The call for projects is for years, fiscal years, 2020 through 2025. We have <coughs> two projects that are in the, essentially in the conceptual stage and early preliminary engineering, but more so developing concept reports, mm -hmm. and that is the Chapel Hill DDI and the Lee Road Extension. The next step uh, for those projects would be uh, going to design, going to PE, uh, preliminary engineering, and that could occur 
uh, as early as 20, fiscal year 2021. So we would, we would have the concept reports completed and be ready for the next phase, which would be preliminary engineering. And similarly, to on the Chattahoochee Hills Trail project, mm -hmm. we have um, uh, we have that one as well. That one is in PE already, um, and we would be ready to move to right of way acquisition in 2022. Uh, there are two projects. Well, essentially, I've listed the Lee Road Widening project based on discussions recently about we're not exactly sure where that is going to land. Uh, for the construction year, but there is a, a an opportunity to try and secure additional federal funding for it. Uh, in my discussions with the Atlanta Regional Commission, they indicate that for fiscal year 2020, there is very little funding available. Uh, but uh, they they would um, they would consider um, a request if they could. If they could work it in. So essentially, fiscal years 2021 through 2025 is what we would be applying for. Mm -hmm. Between now and 2025, there is likely to be another call for projects. Usually, the Atlanta Regional Commission looks to every other year uh, at the outside every third year. But um, so far in, in 2016 into 17, was the last call. This is 19 into 20. And so we would anticipate another call for projects uh, between now and 2025. For the two projects that are in the concept stage, Chapel Hill, DDI, and Lee Road Extension, we have not progressed to the point where we have an estimate of what the project would cost for construction. So I, I did not. Uh, um, have, I don't have a figure for that, <coughs> but I, I, frankly, it may be that uh, with all that we have going uh, between now and, and between these projects and all the other projects, that perhaps uh, those may not be quite ready for construction in fiscal 2025. So I, I didn't even attempt uh, an estimate on that. Uh, but. If, if the consensus was that, well, maybe we could be ready by then, then there is the option of, uh, of applying for construction funding and um, the earliest would be 2025. Um, the Lee Road uh, widening project, again, uh, construction funding, we, we would have a shortfall. Any, any delay in implementation is gonna escalate the cost uh, we certainly could benefit from additional funding whatever year it goes into. Uh, so, so these are the, the four target projects again because they have the greatest chance of success. Uh, that is my recommendation rather than attempting to bring other projects in uh, under the circumstances to come in on, on these four. Mm -hmm. so, I, I appreciate this in the ARC Again, we're always wanting to leverage our capital stack. Um, obviously, transportation is, is, has a large appetite, as I say. Um, and, and so that being said, it, 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 it's balancing it. So here's my question. By applying to the ARC, and this is the point, this is the, my whole purpose of aligning all of our initiatives, right? Um, and, and so if we, committed, if we pursue this ARC, does it obligate us? Does it uh, obligate the board of commissioners that okay, we, you get this money, but you got to be shovel ready? And there's a there's a tug. There's a there's a limited amount of capacity we have at any given moment, whether it's operational or whether it's financial. And, and, and sometimes it's not in the absence of just you don't have enough. It's how it hits, and it's making sure it's aligned. So in, in saying this. Um, I'm always one not to deny opportunities. You know, you always want to have um, access to capital, no matter what. You always want to have access to money. You always want to have the option of saying yes or no versus not even being in a position to pursue it. So don't hear me wrong, that's for the record. But at the same point, 
if you pursued this, when would you have to, you said 22, what's the actual month we had to have this in by? This has to be in by October 11th. So in less than 30 days. Correct. And it would, it would require a, a resolution from the That's board. Fair. Which we can only do in our ne very next meeting, right, to make this. You only have one moment to do this. Can't do it tonight. Right. So yeah. Maybe the next meeting. First meeting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think it's October 1st. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mark. That mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause for a second. Um, plenty administrator. I mean, in light of, don't let our earlier conversations weigh on this. Just look at it for what it is for now, and then we can overlay later. Mm hmm um, yes, I would say yes. Yeah, we won't find out till next year. Um, All right, so again, opportunity. Let's, let's we have a problem. That we're looking at other funding options as well. We're in play. I understand. We get one more time. Wish, if he goes and hooks it, he's like, man, y'all need to go out here and hook this thing, and y'all not going to eat it. I'm trying to reel this. So, no, I acknowledge. I get it. Right. We're just trying to like, okay, I can't pull that in the boat right now, but I got it. But hold on to it, Miguel. Don't let that go. I get it. I mean, this is inside, guys. So, no, I appreciate it. So, Madam Chair, I mean, I, I'm not going to apply. We'll have it. We'll deal with the problem later. Uh, let me ask you, uh, okay. first. would you want to pursue funding for all of the projects, or do you What's the likelihood you're going to get them? I mean, they're competitive anyway. They're, that is that is very true. That, can that, you turn all these around? Can you apply for all four in less than 30? I mean, are you able got, to create? Yeah, we, we, can, we can file the application. That The question is, <clears throat> can you commit to the match? Because we, we've got... Want to file match again? Oh, wait. Yeah, we, we've, got, uh, we've got preliminary engineering for two of the projects right away for all four of the projects. Mm -hmm. And then, depending on where we are for construction, at least um, two of them by 2025. Um, if we're talking about um, just the PE and the right of way, right. we're looking at um, about 11 million. I don't know why that number keeps coming up, but it's, it's about 11 million. Oh yeah, okay, I see it now. So yeah, we're, we're okay. So. So it would it would be at minimum twenty percent of eleven million. All right. So yeah. yep, two eight um, twenty two less two point two two point two. Okay. All right. Two eight. That max. We would have to have. Do you have it in our capital transportation fund? I know the answer, but yeah, the answer is not even close. All right. All right. So you have to create. That's good answer. So there lies the, I understand, but then there's also our part that we have to play. Uh, I mean, but again, one more time, what is the likelihood that the county would get all four? At the uh, full funding level, uh, very low likelihood. So we're lucky to get one to some to, degree. You get, pick and choose among which one would you? Well, let me say this. I. I let me, let me, she brings a good point. Which one would you push? In? Um, all right, so let's just say we need additional funding. Sometimes the lead road, obviously, it's important, uh, but yet, based on recent conversations, it's like, are we compounding that unless that money can be used to help us? But then we still got to turn and put two million up. All right. Yeah. So, so, so certainly from a funding standpoint, lead road would be the number one. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the complication there is. What year, and we don't have the answer on that one. And it certainly couldn't be 2020. Uh, well, it, there is a slight possibility of 2020, but it's more likely in later years. Uh, later months. Later years. Like years. Like 2024 or 2025, because once we get off schedule, we go to the back of the line, kind of. Uh, unless, unless somebody Align all the stars, and, and right. Madam Chair, you have been so far very good, very adept at doing this. I, I don't know that you can pull it up yet <laughs> one, one more time. Right. Right. Well, okay, so then, as a default to that point, so we well, understood it, it has issues, it has sharp edges. What's next? Trail. 
actually the leave road the leave road extension and this is my my personal opinion has the greatest potential for the county um, as a as an infrastructure project. The trail certainly were further along. Nice to have. It is a nice uh, amenity. Uh, there is federal funding that would attach to it, but the level of commitment, uh, if you move that project, we're, we're looking at um, potentially about five million, so, so you're looking at a, a million match for it. Um, and then if we go to construction, that's about 20 million. Mm -hmm. I think Mark, you remember like 40 something million based on that conservation mm -hmm. study that was done, mm -hmm. you know, so doing it to keep going, that was yeah. probably happening. So, so um, based on the, what's in the pipeline, I, I would say because we are that much closer to, um, to getting the project to construction, Lee Road widening would be number one. The Lee Road extension, in my view, has the greatest potential for the county. Chapel Hill um, DDI, the, the, uh, the jury is out on that one because as they do the analysis, the, the value in going to a full-fledged DDI may not be there. And again, they, they haven't finalized the study, but there is a possibility that the recommendation may come back as a operational, a series of operational improvement projects. So that's why I didn't even get into estimating the construction because I can't see my way clear that far on those projects. Uh, the, uh, the two Lee Road projects um, definitely. Yeah, we had a conversation I mean, again, open record. Um, we, we had a um, discussion during our finance committee um, this morning, a special call mm -hmm. finance committee meeting. We sort of acknowledged the fact of, of, of aligning uh, our cash flows against our project schedule. And so based on that, again, it's about timing. We understand the importance, we understand the economic, how our future is tied to this corridor and all that it recommends I mean, and, and suggests it's about timing and our ability to really be able to deliver uh, and be ready for it and not compromise everything else because of it. It has to be, they, they have to coexist. So here's my only comment, this is for the committee, is if, if there's a way the staff can show they can coexist and you have to smooth out this timing, I think it's, it's but it, it can't be so we, we do this, and it, it throws everything off based on just the pureness of, of just timing. So I won't belabor this again. Um, next year I have no problem with applying because it's no. This had a problem. We got a. This has a problem that we got awarded it versus we need to try. Right. Um, you got additional money. Mm -hmm. Timing again. Um, I'm mean, gonna leave it at that. But again, I'm still looking for staff to show me a, a timeline. I know there's some other conversations that can be had. Mm -hmm. If we could just buy ourselves some time and line all this up, perhaps there's a way forward. So I, I'm not fearing the math on this, but the capacity to um, um, forecast the future, but Miguel, we need, we're going to need some help. So, all right, so as an action item, we, we get to ask, kind of mystery, based on our conversation today, do we move forward? I want you to weigh into it um, officially. Do we at least apply for these ARC grants, recognize that we still need to reconcile and sharpen our pencil on the time for cash? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So in the order of, I don't think we're saying we're going to do them all. And, and, and frankly, when if you were awarded them all and you couldn't move one or two of them, you would just forfeit whatever you were awarded on those projects. Is it a penalty? Is it like we all look at wasting our time? And the, the, talk to me how it works. The only, honest. the only, well, the penalty is if you have already utilized federal funds on that project, yes. then you have to give that money back. Right. Okay. That's the only penalty. Well, other than uh, 
having to uh, rehabilitate your reputation in terms of <laughs> delivery. Uh, yes, yeah, so all right, so do that. Now you're trying to, uh, right, so let's be focused. I mean, you, you've answered the question very honestly. There's some political, there's some, like I said, there should be a drawback to like, we don't went through all this trouble to analyze what you asked for, you didn't need it, you don't want to do that. Or you weren't ready, you don't want to do that. So don't just, so let's be strategic. So if there's one or two, uh, um, Again, this is high concentration in District 2. There's a high concentration that we go. Do I know it cuts across multiple districts? It's going to be what it's going to be. So the committee needs to be unanimous on doing this. So. Looking for the nod. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so right it right. sounds like the one that's most important would be this time. The room. You gotta get the widening before you get to extension, or you you apply for the extension, recognize you still work through widening. What are you saying? You you almost have to commit to the widening right. to have a good to have a decent chance of landing the extension. So I don't think they're both. gonna. So you apply for both. Yeah, we would have to apply for both. Uh, yeah, but now we can apply for. We can apply for all of them, right? But you would have to have a resolution saying, look, if we get all of them, then we're going to come up with commitment. Oh, no, we can't do that. Oh, no, I did. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Oh, we just go and we just leave. Now, of course, uh, keep this in mind that, that the commitment is um, not all due at the same time. The commitment is spread out over these various fiscal years. So if, if we got funding, for example, if you take the Chapel Hill DDI, if we got funding in 2021 for PE, and we got $750,000, it being the estimate, let's say that we're on the hook for a quarter million of that. So they give us half a million, we got to come up with a quarter million. That's the exposure for that project that year then right of way would come two years later and then you would have an exposure of potentially a million for that project two years later. It's not all due at once. It's not like the letter we got from GDOT saying if you want to move the project and you want us to do it, you need all the money up front. Okay. I think I got it. Right, I'm sure about my, my suggestion if you, you know, uh, as chair of this it would be do the, the legal wide legal extension, and you need to consider uh, the implications of the DDI Chapel mm -hmm. Hill. You do have congestion. That is a priority. That's something that we talked about. So I would want to, if we're going to seek opportunities, it needs to be spread across the town. I mean, that's, a, that's my suggestion. So, I mean, at least pursue it. Um, how far along are we in that? Because, again, this was supposed to been approved, what, six years ago? With the city and it got pulled on this mark, we mm -hmm. posted much further along on that DDI. So I'm I'm comfortable that we we, we got this before you. But what do you think? Well, we, we add that as to I, I don't I don't believe in the, the the trail. I just can't see that's a nice to have, but something dealing with economic development or congestion is something that's more palatable to our current climate. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean the trail is nice, but it ain't it doesn't get you what you want right now. I would agree with that up to a point because um, what we would be seeking as it relates to the trail is design and right away money, not, not construction. That can be deferred. Uh, that would come in later years where you may have other opportunities for funding. Again, there's going to be another, well, I shouldn't say that, but there is a good likelihood that there would be another COFA projects within two years three years at the outside. Mm -hmm. And so before everything comes due in 2024, 2025, we would have the opportunity to try and get additional funding. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a difference between importance and priority. And all of these are important. They all have a plan. They all have a, 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 a part, I'm sure, in your overall strategic plan. But if I had to prioritize, right, all the time, your reputational risk, it's like, okay, well, we don't have to go after everything. Let's be focused, and, and the thing that's going to give us the biggest yield, I'm just saying, I, I agree with everybody saying, since it seems like consensus is the lead role widening extension, but I think I, I would spread it across to the DDI, it's something we've already been down the path, and we have congestion there. Um, but again, 
And, and you sound like the um, yeah, the DBI, there are some discussions about the value of the DBI. So it may just change completely and go in a different it, direction. Is that what you're thinking? That, that's, okay. that's my sense. It's very early on, but just my read of it, the outcome may change. Right. We, we, It'll we be were, something to relieve the congestion, yes. but maybe not a DBI. That that's correct. That okay. 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 Well, okay. then that's fine advice you're trying to figure out what they just told us, but seems like it's less of an obligation then, right? Because we're thinking DDI, that's what we're applying for. But if they change the, the outcome for that, we'll give you money for this, then don't we have to process what they just told us? Well, not necessarily, because they, they, we are at the concept stage of, de of developing the project, and one of the things that you have to do is confirm or validate your thinking. That you thought a DDI was the solution. Is that true? Well, you, you have to analyze it and then come up, and, and it could be that the results of the analysis are, you know what, that was not the right solution. Here's what would work better. Okay. So let, let's try to bring this to closure then. So what is the action then? So the action would be administrative concurrence to apply, and I would bring a resolution of support before the board at the next meeting. I, it would have something like this attached to it, embedded in the resolution. You have some of the figures of list of projects, and and essentially would say, we Douglas County, if you give us these funds in these years, we are committed to finding the match in those years. Not that we're going to come up with them. all of them. All right, so bring forth the resolution of the board, which there's somebody asking, well, what did the We're saying one thing, yes, apply, bring forth the resolution, but are we recommending a subset of this or this set? I'm thinking a subset. And I'm still that's that's why we're having the discussion, because that's that, what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Subset, so all right, county mm -hmm. administrator. All right, we roll wide in extension. Do we do DDI? I've got a long shot on I get the sweep, I get the trail, but I'm just waiting. No, I would say no on the DDI until we know exactly where we stand. I mean, we don't know at this point. All right, and what about the trail? Um, it's steady, it's, or it's less impact, it may keep it moving along, but you're... I, I would say do all three. You leave those wide and leave those extension and, and the trail. And, right. the, and because the trail, we will have some uh, collaboration from other there is collaboration yeah. with them, but they would not be. We'd be doing our own. Yeah, we would be doing least. our section, and they would be tying into it. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned, and uh, I think this is the most appropriate time to bring it up, that is, there's different funding sources. When you apply, the the uh, trail comes out of a different funding source. Mm -hmm. Therefore. You're not competing, so so if you prioritize the projects, you almost have to have two tiers because you're you got infrastructure, road infrastructure yeah, projects. Totally different than that. It's a different funding source, different category. So you could apply for that and not impact the other two. The thing that it would ultimately result in is if you get the funding. Now that's one where we already are expanding. Funds. They already have the PE, but we don't have the right of way on the construction. That is right. correct. So we could we could apply for the right of way, and and continue with the design and be able to get into the right of way phase if we get the match. That's what we need. I see. Which means okay, that's why we need to plan and right. capitalization fund and replenishment. But no one's like this. So okay. Well, Madam Chair, we're okay with taking this full board. You got to get through that on, but okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so this, um, for the record, um, county administrator, uh, that we're giving administrative concurrence to um, apply for these grant opportunities with the ARC, uh, bring before the board of commissions at our next, or at our October meeting, to pass a resolution to formally apply. Yes, sir. But the top of the three projects named as Lee Road Extension, Lee Road, Lee Road Widening, Lee Road Extension, and the trail system. Mm -hmm. That's correct. All right. Can be motion. I just want to do it anyway for the record. That we agree. We so have a consensus. So yes. Moved. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Careful. I need to double All right. All right. Next, what we got? Come on, Miguel. We got to keep going. We could. Uh, 
Uh, next item is uh, just an update. It shouldn't take very long. Okay. Comprehensive transportation uh, plan up, uh, update yep. is being advertised. Bids are due. So the proposals are due the 20th. Yep. This month. This month. We will need to appoint a stakeholders committee, and um, there would be appointments from the board. Various, certainly, uh, typically the other agencies are members, but if you have a representative from your district, yep. like each district, that would be good. Yep. Or anybody else that you would want to, to add to the committee. Uh, I will be making that request uh, as the minute that we have a contract ready, because we would need to have the committee form. So, Yes, just just getting that out so you'd be thinking about in another month or so we will need to have a committee we, we need you, to set the go ahead. I just want to be specific with the stakeholders. What's the name of the committee so I can make sure? It, it is the comprehensive transportation plan update yeah. stakeholders. Okay. So with that, um, we just had a conversation recently with the Fourth Mrs. District. Um, Having representation from each one is important. One avoid is stacking the deck um, by having just so many art large. Right? We've had experiences where you have citizens get applied to communities and they're overpowering it based on certain views. So I, I think some kind of way um, being able to address the at large as well as the district will help balance it. Mm -hmm. So I'll let y'all work out. So well, I have a question. So is this a is this stakeholders <coughs> or is it a committee of the county? It's well, not a committee of the county. It's, it's a stakeholders. It would be representatives from the city, the county, and, and it would be various cities. So Villa Rica would have a representative. Yeah. Would have so it's not a it's not a committee as we say committee. I said, okay. but I still would want somebody from my oh, yes, I agree. be in that room to make sure that yes. voice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So we got five okay. people, at least from what the Board of Commissioners, Correct. respectfully, and then, Correct. Whatever. then the other agencies and mm -hmm. cities. Now we have the development authority potentially having the representative. All right, so it's due back on the 20th of this month, which is what? Friday. Friday? <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you. Friday. And then how long will it take you to process this? Well, um, I mean, whatever the process is, it's fine. Yeah, probably a month by the time we so it's it's end of October, so then we're awarding it maybe the first meeting of November. That's that's probably a good time. Right. Uh, and then they would start. So we want to have this committee, everything all set by the end of the year, going to the first of year. That I'm just keeping it mm -hmm. simple. In December, you got our budget adoption and all. I mean, mines are somewhere else. I'm not certain how well you can get. I think yeah. I, I, th anything. I think it, I think you're correct. I think we would need to have the committee members lined up before the end of the year so that we're ready to hit, hit the, ground running. the ground running next year. And that's good. Probably how you should be done. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And these meetings will be held in the evening. Yes. Okay. And at different locations throughout the camp. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, um, all right. The, the next item that is, we have we're coming up on our recertification for the county as um, a locally certified agency to handle federal funds. We have to make application, and so that will be coming up uh, in another month or so. How often do we have to do that? Every three years. All right, so at that time, this is your first so time we've done it in the your administration. So when was the last time we did it? Uh, 2016, late 2016 to 2017. Okay. So we will be coming up for renewal. There, there's a, a number of things that are needed, one of which is a Title VI uh, plan. And I do have a handout on that uh, for your perusal within the next weeks or so. All right, so what is this? It's a Title VI plan. Yep. 
and we have to, this has to be adopted by the board and submitted as part of our application. When is the application due? The application is due uh, by uh, the end of October. Okay. So we need a chance to read this. Yeah. <laughs> and then obviously the full board commission, right? And we need to adopt something. So um, yes. I, I'd say, can we just do an administrative concurrence to send this on to the full board of commissioners and give them time to read it? No, sure. Slam them at the last minute. Okay. Is this out. exactly the same as the one we did three years ago? It's very similar, Pretty much. but the question is, did we adopt it last time? Well, I don't know. So that means are we uncertified, unqualified? No, we're very qualified now, yeah. but we may not have been as um, fully um, qualified as we thought we were. Okay, so you check with Lisa. Um, okay, we, I'm fine to say that. Validate. Some questions are what people don't say. Okay, can we find out? But still get this out to the board. Yeah, we, it, it, we, yes. need, to, we, yeah, need, we need to do it anyway because uh, even if we had everything lined up from three years ago, you have to redo it and resubmit it every, yeah, every which is fine. It's so, over. Right. The so, history is the past. And good. You will, will validate whether we are in or out. But okay. we'll be, right now, we're saying get this, as an administrative concurrence, get this before the full board commissioners. Mm -hmm. So we're prepared by the end of October, as you say, to apply. Mm -hmm. Yes. We need to get it back. Yes. We slam more stuff. Sometimes we just want to get this. Keep going. Okay. Right. Well, yes. um, the next item is just, um, and actually we've talked about it so many times in the, in the last few days, but just updates related to the projects. We do have a lot of projects that are going to go to construction. Yes. And so there's going to be activity. Um, Good stuff plenty of activity starting this year into next year. Are we ready? We are so ready. Staff ready is the program. I mean, is everybody ready? And I'm telling you, is everybody ready? We have yes, with one exception. Right, which is? Well, two exceptions. Thank you. Um, we do not have the inspection staff to be able to handle all of the projects in particular should we road advance at some point? You know, different discussion, but um, so that that's one where we would potentially need it. Yeah. Uh, but we need the um, the testing, so we need um, to be able to get an on call outfit that can do the testing. I think we have this conversation. You know, we talked about the inspectors. We talked about the inside the program managers. We have we. Mark, what kind of administrator, where, where do we stand? We know we have to do it. We say we would do it in-house yeah. versus that you know, our, our, our colleagues do it. we got to get it done. So this is the thing that we, we realized we went through last time. So what do you need? If, if we don't have to, if we're not dealing with Libro, we can handle the inspections in-house on all the projects. However, we need testing. We need an on-call testing out. Testing is totally independent. Totally independent from mm -hmm. those things. But then we, okay, have we budgeted for the, you're talking about SPLOS projects, right? Yes. Isn't that part of the SPLOS budget? It is. Mm -hmm. But we, yeah. So we have to get some money in here. But we need not the testing. to approve oh, not. an on-call okay. contract. Okay. So is this on-call? Right, this okay. is your because we got three on or four project. different projects that we need the same thing. Okay, all right, yeah. I, I get you. We had them in 2002 plus two. Also, I'm not against it. We know we need to do it. Okay. Duly right. noted. Okay. Now I'll take care of that. So, what does that mean exactly? That, um, can I bring a contract before the board to accomplish that? Because we we have the but the, the work hasn't started yet. So when, when the work has started, we right. have you said it's about to start. Well, yeah. we we issued a notice to proceed on uh, the Whitestone Coal. Mm -hmm. So that's underway. Mm -hmm. We are about on the agenda is a another mm -hmm. contract for Maxim Road. Right, right. So cold water and door. Sweet water water and door. Go back to our we're trying to run multi-task, uh, multiple. Channels. 
Um, we also need a third party evaluator for these on-demand contracts that we're running out of our purchasing committee. We recognize we need to get somebody here as soon as possible to be able to fulfill that to make sure that this is done. So it needs to be, they need to run simultaneously. Um, so uh, if in fact you're trying to accelerate getting these on-demand and getting these tests and getting those done, then we need, you need, it, it can't, you can't pretend like that isn't required. So let's get that, um, let's get, that's on you and I. We need to find somebody to put this in. So I have one? No. You can do it? No. He, he didn't feel he was the right person. Mm -hmm. Simply because he thought he would be biased. So it's just the we, other one was Anna, one. and I do have it. So we, okay. we had a, another name, yeah. and Miguel was talking to him, so he said he can't. Then let's, let's deal with that in our first thing. Uh, we're, 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 we can move on as fast as we can get that in there. You know, we were ready the other day. We recognize no problem. So let's, um, um, let's finish that first, but I'm not ready to put it on. Let's say we can move this, if we can have a person before our next October meeting, then I'm okay, but we gotta have that person meeting first. Can we make that happen? Um, we have all one. We already have one set up on the You got one coming up. Yeah. So we'll, we'll address that in 24th, and then maybe we can make the October first meeting. We could put it on today's event anyway. Okay. Yes. Right now, sure. No, no shotguns. Yes, they need to. They need to. To the, to yeah, have one okay. All right. So mm -hmm. bring that forth in. All right. Yeah. What else? Keep going. Ahead. Ahead. Guys, easy. that was intense, rich. Um, some good stuff. We recognize again for the open record. We know we roll is a strategic fit. We want to acknowledge, uh, kind of make sure that we, um, Miguel Valentin's effort to, to fix that. Uh, we do. We really do appreciate it. Um, we didn't know what it was going to come in as and the expectations. Um, let's just work through it, right? Let's sharpen our pencil, let's get our line, let's get that spreadsheet right um, from a, a financing perspective. And let's um, stay close to this. Let's not wait till two weeks from now to talk again. Can we commit to that, county administrator? That we, you and I, and finance and our program manager can get together to line all this up? Yes. Okay. I'm sure we'll take it as a task. Okay. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Miguel, you okay? I'm good. All right. Gary Watson? I'm good. You're good. Uh, if there's nothing else needs to come before the Board of Commission, this meeting. Wait, wait. One thing. All right. I'm going to Washington. Uh -huh. I'll be talking to our senators and our congressmen. I'm going up there with the Chamber for Legislative Agenda. Is there anything important that we need to emphasize other than infrastructure from the federal? I'm, I'm, I'm right in there. Well, frankly, one of, one of the things that, that we could use some assistance on is the, uh, the wireless small cell provider. I plan on saying something about that. Okay. Do we yeah, have, you because have because yeah. essentially they, they, they gave them the house and threw the kitchen sink at them too and, and left us uh, with a lot of exposure. Got it. Mm -hmm. Do we know? Okay, get offline. Thank you for that. All right, guys, we'll let everybody go. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Well done. Very good.